Welcome to the California Strength Lift Right program. Today we're gonna to talk about the clean and specifically the first exercise in our progression for teaching the clean. We use a non-ballistic variation called a high hang muscle clean. So from grip width to the hook grip to all of the arm mechanic principles to pressure and tension, we're gonna talk about it all and cover this in detail as we go. This is Wes Kitts, current American record holder in the clean and jerk in the 109 kilo category, here to help demonstrate. So hopefully you'll find this helpful. The first thing we wanna do is look at our grip width because the grip width is ultimately going to dictate where the bar makes contact in the power position and what the front rack ultimately ends up looking like. The front rack is very important because in the clean, we're trying to produce force and we're trying to absorb force effectively. So again, starting with grip width. If Wes rotates his hands out, you can see that there's a carrying angle that exists from the shoulder to elbow to hand. So his hands flare distal from his shoulders. We need to account for that in the front rack. So as he brings, his, brings the hands up, the wrists, this is approximately where his grip width ought to reside on the barbell. This is gonna produce a nice stable front rack so that he can support the, the weight through the lats and brace through the core properly. If we take that same organization and we'll apply that grip width to the barbell, go ahead and pick up the bar with your grip. The first thing we want to talk about is the hook grip. So the hook grip is going to allow him to relax his arms and maintain connectivity to the barbell. So the idea is he is going to bring his thumb onto the bar and then wrap at least his first two fingers down on that second joint in the, in the thumb. So he's got a comfortable grip uh, on the barbell. This provides some irritation here on the thumb at first, but this is a grip that you'll get used to over time as you start to callus up a little bit. Grip width assigned, hook grip assigned. Let's start with the power position that we're gonna work out of in the, in the high hang clean variation. So go ahead and stand up tall first. First thing we wanna talk about is the foot organization. So Wes's feet are in a toes forward organization and this is what we call a pulling stance. So his feet are just about shoulder width here. The next thing we wanna talk about is where pressure resides on the foot. So in the power position of the clean, we wanna make sure that we have the weight in front of the ankle and behind this big toe joint. So right in the middle of the foot is where the pressure ought to be. Too far forward on the toe or too far back on the heel is gonna create issues for the sequence of extension. Remember, all that force starts proximally and moves distally, just like we covered in the snatch, so the hips become the engine for force. Foot pressure is one of the most important considerations that you can have in creating that proper sequence. So, toes pointed straight ahead, weight on the middle of the foot. His hook grip is assigned, his grip width is correct. From here, we'll start with assigning tension properly. So. The tension is going to be in the lats. His shoulders are gonna be down. His arms are gonna be relaxed and passive. There should be no tension here in the arms whatsoever. His 360 degree brace should be assigned. So from pelvic floor to the top of the diaphragm to this weight belt around his midsection called his transverse abdominis to his lumbar region, his erectors, that provides that 360 degree brace. Anytime we're doing anything athletic, that brace has to be assigned. It doesn't have to be 100% contracted, but all of these muscles have to be recruited so that you can brace properly, so that you're responsive with the barbell. As you extend, the bar is allowed to rise and you have that propulsion that's created. Brace, tension, foot pressure, now we're ready to descend into a power position. So 
making sure his shoulders maintain directly on top of the barbell. He's going to bend his knees, keeping the foot pressure in the middle of the foot, and he's going to want to keep his hips as neutral as possible. So we don't want to pour, pour the water out forward or backwards. If we're using a bucket analogy, the hips need to stay neutral. The head and spine stays at neutral as well. So from this position here, he is ready to push through the middle of the foot and he's just going to simply stand up. So an extension doesn't have to be more complicated than that. We find so frequently flawed extension as athletes start to move faster through these positions. All we need is to stand up with force. So all that force needs to start from the glutes, from the hips, and then he pushes down through the platform using the quads. So from the power position, again, just stand up. <clears throat> and again, the arms stay passive and relaxed. The next sequence is to create the power position. And then Wes is gonna stand up and then he's going to bring his elbows up. So when he completes the extension of the legs and the hips, the elbows are gonna be allowed to rise. So go ahead from the power position, stand up, elbows up. And if you see where Wes stops here, it's right at the, at the bottom of the pec line. He's not over pulling the barbell way up to his chin. He's creating a movement that feels comfortable, that feels correct. Power position, stand up, elbows up. Now from here, the next phase is to hit the extension, then let the elbows rise, and then we want to focus on externally rotating from the shoulder to create the front rack. So in an ideal situation, the thumbs will not break the plane of the body. As he stands up and the elbows come up, he rotates from the shoulder and the thumbs will never break the plane of the body. So the bar stays very close. So from the power position, stand up, elbows up, rotate and receive into that front rack. Now this isn't a fast movement, this isn't a disjointed movement. It's a movement that stays connected and stays in one speed the entire time. So from the power position, let's try that again. It's fluid, it's precise. Stand up, elbows up, rotate and receive. The bar doesn't bounce on his front rack, he meets the bar effectively by rotating at the shoulders to create this proper position. Continuing on our progression through the non-ballistic variation of the muscle clean here, we're going to add in now a front squat. So making sure that we have proper arm mechanics, that we produce a proper front rack, and then learning to squat out of that position is gonna be important because the next phase is going to be do, to do a high hang non-ballistic clean. Let's go from the power position. We're gonna stand up, elbows up, rotate and receive the barbell into the front rack. Once we have our front rack established, now it's time to execute a front squat. So we can pop the feet out just a little bit to create room for his hips. When we squat, we allow the athletes to toe out to a maximum of about 10 degrees. Any more than 10 degrees, we're gonna work on mobility and make sure that we have sufficient hip flexor, adductor, length to be able to create these good shapes in the front squat. When we start the front squat, it takes a half a breath to get that 360 degree brace. And as he descends, the hips are gonna remain neutral. He's gonna sit his hips right into his ankles and he's gonna drive his elbows up through the process. And then stand. One more time, so sit the hips neutral, directly into the, in between the ankles as he drives the elbows up. So he keeps as vertical a posture as he can with his torso. Go ahead and stand. So once we have that established, we can move into the next phase. But if you're having issues with developing this front rack, a couple of quick mobility considerations, good stretches that we use here, the first is a partner assisted stretch. So as the coach centers up on the athlete, interlace one hand on the inside of each of the front rack 
hands and drive the shoulders in between the elbows. So once the shoulders are in between the elbows, go ahead and pull the bar away from the athlete's throat so they're not going to pass out because the carotid artery gets pinched. And then we're gonna to squat together. So as Wes squats, I'm gonna maintain that elbows coming up. We're gonna to squat together all the way into the bottom of the position. And then stand. Good communication is important when you're doing this exercise, but that's gonna help free up the lats and really provide the athlete a roadmap from a neuromuscular standpoint to achieve those positions. The second exercise that we all use here at Cal Strength is just a quick lat opener. So Wes does this all, almost every time he cleans. He starts with the PVC uh, near the end of the, the pipe here. And so what he's gonna do is bring the PVC up to create almost a 45 degree angle between the forearm and the bicep here. And he's going to take his other hand and reach underneath his armpit and then slide down to the end of the bar. Bring the elbow as close to forward as possible. And he's gonna use this offhand to torque on the tricep to create this external rotation so that he opens up the lat. This is just a really good opportunity for Wes to warm up the lat, to warm up the shoulder, and just to get in a mobilized front squat position so that he can rack the bar properly. So the next step in our progression is to take the bar from the power position, from the high hang, and perform what we call a non-ballistic high hang clean. So again, non-ballistic meaning without a ton of energy on the barbell, just focusing on positions, tension, and timing. So what we're gonna wanna do is develop the power position. We're gonna do the exact same sequence in terms of standing up, elbows coming up, and then as we externally rotate from the shoulder, when the bar makes contact with the shoulder, the athlete's gonna descend into a front squat at the same time. So it's gonna be a very rhythmic uh, movement. So from the power position, stand up, elbows up, rotate, receive, and squat. So this gets us in the habit, go ahead and stand, of timing the external rotation and receiving of the barbell with that descent down into that squat position. So again, it's a very slow, methodical movement, but it's precise. Stand up, elbows up, rotate and receive into that clean. Make sure that these positions look correct. Make sure the tension is stored in the right place. Make sure that foot pressure is assigned correctly. And one final note, we talked about a pulling base versus uh, a squatting base. You can go ahead and start in this exercise in a little wider stance than you ordinarily would to provide an opportunity for you to, to produce that good front squat. So one more time, Wes. Stand up, elbows up, rotate, receive into the squat and stand. The next step in our progression is to produce what we call a non-ballistic stage clean. So this is gonna involve us pausing at the different positions that we believe to be important in the clean progression on the way down and on the way up. And ultimately, we're gonna arrive at that high hang position and execute a high hang non-ballistic clean from that position. So again, power position, which we've gone over, Bar should be somewhere around mid thigh. Foot pressure should be right in the middle of the foot. Arms should be relaxed. Tension should be stored in the lats. And of course the core should have that good 360 degree brace. From here, what we wanna do is hinge at the hip. And as Wes hinges at the hip, the bar's gonna come down to the knee. And when the bar comes down to the knee, the shins need to be vertical. 
So perpendicular from the platform. The weight is somewhere around the ankle in this position, never forward of where it ought to be in the power position. It can be slightly back over the ankle. Back is flat, core is still braced, arms are still nice and relaxed. His hamstrings in this position will have a slight stretch. From here, we bend the knees and come down to mid shin. So as the knees come forward, the weight settles into the middle of the foot again. The shoulders are just above the hips. The hips are just above the knee. The shoulders are on top of the barbell here. As he pushes to come back to that position at the knee, the shins are going vertical. His shoulders come in advance of the bar, slightly in this position. From here, he then hinges at the hip, back up to the power position. Again, the foot pressure sits right in the middle of the foot at the power position, and he's gonna stand up, bring his elbows up, rotate, and receive into a front squat. So we'll take that one more time. From the top down, we're pausing. From the bottom up, we're maintaining the pause until we get to the power position, and he's hitting that non-ballistic high hang clean. From the power position, bend the knees, down to the knee and pause, come down to mid shin. Now, as he pushes from the platform, shoulders and hips rise together, hamstrings are stretched. Now he hinges at the hip, back to the power position, stands up, elbows up, rotate, receive into that high hang, non-ballistic clean. This is a great exercise to make sure that you have all of the tension assigned correctly and that you can ingrain these good positions that we believe exist in the clean. Once we've ingrained a lot of the finer points of the movement and we've seen what the movement is gonna look like from the bottom all the way up through the receiving of the clean, now we're gonna add some speed to the movement. Again, one of the keys to movement and understanding these techniques is the faster you move, the less precise your movement is bound to become. So making sure that we simplify movement as we add speed is a really important component. So we, go, we start back with a high hang power clean. So from that same power position, we're gonna hit the same extension as we did when we were just standing up, but we're gonna make that more explosive. We're gonna produce more force on the barbell. The arms still need to remain passive. They still need to go through that same good path. Elbows up, rotate and recede. So almost a jumping sensation, but we want to land on a full foot. So go ahead and push to the middle of the foot, jump and catch. This is a high hang power clean variation. Again, he doesn't jump back or forward. He allows the elbows to rise. He externally rotates and receives the bar. He doesn't allow the bar to crash on him. From the power position, jump and catch. Good. One drill that we like to start everybody with when we start moving from the non-ballistic progression into a more ballistic variation, go ahead and put the bar down. We'll do a landing drill. Step back from the bar. Wes is gonna come all the way up as tall as he can on the balls of his feet with his hands over his head. And what we wanna do is come down into a good solid landing position with the core braced. So as he comes down, He's gonna land, his hands are gonna come behind him 
and he's going to land on a full foot with a braced core. Go ahead. So there's nothing moving forward with the shoulders in this position and whatever degree the knee is allowed to come forward, the hips are retreating. Whatever degree the hips are retreating, the shoulders are coming forward. So he's in a perfectly balanced position. Go ahead, stand up one more time, all the way up and down onto a full foot, core braced. This is a sensation that you're gonna wanna feel when you receive that high hang power clean. Now we're gonna add the next step in our progression is to take the ballistic variation through the positions from the top down. So there's gonna be a top down stage uh, clean. We're gonna end up at the power position. We're gonna hit a high hang clean from that position. And we're gonna talk about some of the things that we wanna think about in terms of where to receive the bar and how to develop a good efficient squat. So from the power position, again, foot pressure, middle of the foot, core pressure. He's got his 360 degree brace, tension is in the lats, nice and relaxed arms. So from here, he's gonna hinge at the hip, down to the knee, the shins are gonna come vertical, the bar uh, is right at the knee and the weight is gonna be right in the ankle. So hamstrings are stretched, shoulders are slightly in advance of the bar. From here, he's gonna bend his knees. The bar's gonna come down to mid shin. The pressure on the foot's gonna be right on the middle of the foot. And from here, shoulders and hips are gonna to rise together as he pushes his feet through the floor. Shins become vertical again. Shoulders are slightly in advance of the bar. Now he hinges at the hip to the power position. And from here, we're gonna execute a high hang clean. So he's gonna jump and catch, but he's gonna receive the bar in the bottom of the squat. Go ahead, jump and catch and up. And so one of the things we want to work on from this high hang clean is to understand where to meet the bar. As he rotates from the shoulder and descends into that receiving position, what we want to do is make sure that the bar is making contact with the shoulders at around the half squat. So about 90 degrees or just below. And then for that last couple inches, he's going to allow the body to be all the way compressed into the deepest squat position and he's going to create a little stretch shortening cycle out of the bottom of the squat. Really important to make your squat recovery efficient in the clean because after we continue to stand up from the clean we then need to execute a jerk. So we need reserves to maintain that good jerk technique. Go ahead from the high hang. Let's go one more time down to the knee hinging at the hip, down to mid shin, pushing from the, through the ground, come up to the knee, then up to the power position. And as he jumps and catches, he's gonna receive the bar at that half squat, ride it all the way down, and then explode out of the bottom. Very important to understand the tempo of that movement, the timing of that movement, because it becomes very important as we tie together the clean and jerk. Next, we wanna go through a top-down clean. So we're gonna remove the pauses on the way up. So we're gonna pause on the way down, but from the bottom up, we're gonna remove all the pauses and we're gonna focus on the tempo and the timing of the movements. So really important as you clean, it's a heavy exercise. It's really difficult to start slow. You need to make sure that you are using the fastest tempo that you can while maintaining good positions and good tension. So common errors are gonna to be to pull hard with the arms, to pull back behind the barbell. So use the foot pressure as a guide. If your foot pressure doesn't feel correct, that's a good indication that your body positions are pulling off of, off of good, good technique. Go ahead and hit the power position. Then down to the knee. Then down to mid shin. Now from here, he's gonna go ahead and clean. So 
So going through and hitting all of those positions on the way back up, only going as fast as you can while hitting those positions, but making sure that you understand that the tempo is an important part of the movement and that you're gonna want to not slow the lift down and make it mechanical, but use enough speed so that the bar is moving through these positions effectively. So from the power position, down to the knee, down to mid shin, pushing through the floor, good tempo. Not sitting at the bottom of the squat, but trying to focus on receiving the bar right at that half squat, riding it down and standing immediately. Now we're ready to clean from the floor. So tying everything together, we wanna to go from the bottom up using that same good tempo, sitting those same good positions. But the most important part of creating the right positions and tempo is to set up correctly. So where his foot position resides in relation to the bar is very important. So as he approaches the bar and addresses the bar, the bar should be lined up just over that big toe joint. So he should be able to look down and see just a couple inches of his shoe uh, peeking out from the bar. As he comes down and assigns his grip, getting his hook grip on the bar, he doesn't spin the bar right or left, he just comes down and approaches the bar, assigning his hook grip. If you spin the bar, it tends to rotate in your hand and it can tear calluses. So what we want to do is assign that grip. Then from here, he's going to descend as pulling his hips down into position and bringing his shins forward into the bar. So he doesn't roll the bar back or forward. He manipulates his body around the barbell. So pulling himself down into position, shoulders are right on top of the bar. He's ready to start pushing with the legs. So go ahead. And you can see how vertical everything is in the clean. So. And you can hear how the foot pressure is organized over the middle of the foot as he hits his extension. And then he uses that good uh, receiving position to create stability and to create that stretch shortening cycle out of the bottom of the squat. One more time. Sets up with the bar just over that big toe joint, comes down and assigns his hook grip in that proper grip width, pulls himself down with his hips and shins are forward into the bar. And he doesn't squeeze the bar from the floor like the snatch. He initiates the movement with purpose and with some speed, creates those good positions and finishes with confidence.